If you watched my recent video, you'll know that we're midway through a kitchen redevelopment and waiting for planning permission on a small extension. Planning permission is now overdue, what a surprise, but we've got a load of work that we need to do before we can start the extension. So three weeks ago, my builders returned and nine grab lorries or 22 and a half skips later, we've gone from this to this. In today's video, I'm gonna update you on what we've been doing and why. Now, if you watch my videos regularly, this video is for you. General update videos like this don't do particularly well on YouTube. This one probably won't, but that doesn't bother me. What does bother me is I haven't done a video for a few weeks and I wanted to let you know why and generally update you on what I've been up to. And the reason for no videos in the last few weeks, when you're doing a big project like this, it's really hard to get in the creative mindset to sit down and edit a video. Not least because I'm spending most of each day on the phone ordering materials negotiating stuff, speaking to the builders, trying to project manage what's going on. I'm making quite a lot of decisions on all this stuff, not to mention making plenty of cups of coffee for the boys. And also because of all this, I've hardly been on the tools over the last few weeks, which is also gutting, but I'll hopefully be putting that to rights in the next few videos. But why did we start all this work? Well, the problem with this house is it's at the bottom of a sloping garden. We put a temporary sloping path in back in 2010 when we moved in down to the kitchen door. And although temporary, that stayed in place for 13 years. Small technical detail, the ground needs to be lowered by about 100 mil for the new bifolds that will be going in. But that isn't the biggest problem. The main issue we've got with this house at the moment is the ground outside is too high for the floor levels inside. And as a result of this, we've had damp in a number of places for a long time. We had damp in this room, which used to be the utility room. I showed you in my recent plasterboard video the damp here in the corner of the kitchen. Floor level outside is probably about there at the moment. And we also had a lot of problems in this corner of what used to be the TV room. So we needed to do a bit of remodelling to excavate a reasonable amount of earth from outside this kitchen to get ready for the changes that we were making with the extension. And as we tend to charge into things here without planning them properly, we decided this time to do things properly and get a garden designer involved. And this is what she came up with. A horizontal paved area in front of the kitchen with a raised paving area above. And there's lots of other stuff for other phases when we've got the cash to do it. More on that in a minute. Now, as you can see, this plan is not particularly high tech. It almost looks like it's been sort of crayoned, but it is to scale. And what's been brilliant about this plan is it's given our builder a reference point for everything he's done in the last few weeks. Including basic things like just being able to mark out the paths. And it's also helped us to estimate pretty accurately things like the number of bricks and the paving slabs we'd need. So it's back to the three ton Kubota digger you might remember from the car charger trench digging vid, kindly loaned to me again by my mate John. And Danny and Gaz, my two builders, set about excavating the area in front of the kitchen. I also hired a dumper truck so they could ferry the soil up the garden and onto the drive. Walls came down and we had this massive tree root to remove which I then had to cut up with my slightly inadequate electric chainsaw. Now you might remember me saying I had seven skips to remove all that earth in the kitchen to get ready for the underfloor heating. And one of the skip drivers on about the fifth skip said to me, what on earth are you doing getting all these skips when you could be using a grab hire lorry? Grab hire lorries take about two and a half skip loads for the cost of just over a skip itself at between 230 and 250 quid a time. So this time round, it was grab lorries all the way. And thank God for that because we've excavated the equivalent of over a hundred tons of soil turned to two and a half skips or nine grab lorries so far. And we've still got all of this left. Now I've already mentioned the damp in the kitchen. The thing about living in an old property like this, and I'm sure a lot of you out there sympathize with this, is you know you've got multiple problems, but you sort of tolerate them as you go about your daily lives. But when you start a project like this, it gives you an opportunity to get to the bottom of some of the issues you've got. And that's obviously a good thing, but it also, it can be a double-edged sword because in investigating all these issues, you're opening up a massive can of worms. And that's what I've found on this job. The drain from the gutter outside the kitchen was blocked, which I'm sure has been contributing to a lot of the damp issues we've had in that room over the years. It also reveals some other issues. We've got this unsupported wall on the corner of our house and the foundations where the bifolds will be going are pretty non-existent too. We had an ant infestation in the TV room, which I couldn't work out how they were getting in. But when you look at this corner now, you can see that they basically had free reign to come and go as they pleased. 
With the ground being lowered, we also need to lower all the clay pipes, taking rainwater from the roof into the soaker rate, which by the way, I think drains into the neighboring field because I uncovered part of the pipe when I dug the trench for the car charger cable. And it seems to be going across the patio, down into the field, probably into a rich layer of builder's sand that exists about, I don't know, 600 mil below the surface throughout this part of our valley. I wasn't sure if the soak away was working, but I put a hose pipe into it and ran it for about 15 to 20 minutes. And with no sign of any water coming back up through the pipe, I'm pretty confident for now that it's gonna do the job fine. Although typically you're told that you need to update and renew soakways every sort of 10 to 15 years. I've also never liked this gutter and downpipe arrangement on the front of the house. So I've realized I can get rid of it by diverting the small roof gutter at 90 degrees around onto the adjoining roof. So the plan is to take this right angle piece off here and add it to this section up here because ultimately this gutter here will be completely redundant when the roof line has been extended down here at which point the new gutter will drain into a new downpipe which I'm going to be putting on a corner of the house here to replace this one that's going to be removed. I'm also getting rid of this downpipe on the left because well much easier just to have the one bottle gully than two right next to each other. As you can see down here and obviously I've got to put a new section in here to extend this down into the new bottle gully that we've installed. Ah, it's raining now and I'll be diverting the gutter from it into a new downpipe offset uh, which I've ordered from Hargreaves Founders uh, from Gutter Supplies. Could do a video on this whole reconfiguring of old cast iron gutters. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you'd find that interesting. In the meantime, Danny and Gaz have connected new bottle gullies beneath each downpipe to the old clay soakaway via 110 mil underground drainage pipe with straight couplers, wide junctions and this clever adjustable joint. We've also added this new inspection chamber, a big improvement on the old clay system, which was entirely mortared in, giving you no way to check for any blockages. And I've also bought this shallow eco drain, take the rainwater draining off the main patio area. We're linking that eco drain into an inspection chamber we put in back in, I think 2012 when I redid the septic tank. And as the fall isn't massive, up to the eco drain, we're going to improvise. Picked up one of these, which is about sort of 70 mil deep from a local builder supply. You can see the drain I've decided to go with is much shallower and has this nice raw iron lid to it. Drain off piece that sits on the corner. We're not going to have the height to put a 90 degree bend on this, obviously, isn't 90 degrees, uh, 115, I think. So we're instead going to run a bit of 110 mil, probably something along those lines right up to it and cement it to uh, improvise a lower profile exit point for the water. And we've also got this little gully to take the rainwater off the path. And in the odd shower we've had since removing down pipes, I've had to improvise with a temporary arrangement to stop the rainwater massing too close to the house. Now, I've also been cleaning the fascias in preparation for repainting, which I think I've decided I'm gonna repaint using this bitumastic paint. I love this stuff. I stupidly bought this saddle in which I've used previously on our porch. You can see here how badly it peels. This is why I don't like using stain. I bought it for the fascias because they were painted brown so I thought I'd continue with what was there but then reading the back of this realized that you have to completely sand the wood back to a bare state before using it. Plus as I said just don't like stains. Always use an oil even a colored oil if you want that uh, finish rather than a stain because of the peeling that's bound to happen which will give you a load of problems down the line. So let's have a quick look at the construction of the garden walls. With the main structure comprising 100 mil concrete blocks laid on their largest flat side for the main retaining wall to optimize strength. We've got weed matting against the wall and we'll be drilling drainage holes through the finished wall to take any water matting on the other side away into the eco drain. Concrete blocks have then been laid on their side for the path where they're not holding back so much earth. Danny and Gaz have for the most part dug 9 inch or 230 mil foundations for these walls, constructed from sand and gravel, also known as ballast and cement mix. You see on the plan we've got a couple of staircases and Danny has constructed these from cement blocks laid on the concrete foundations with a final layer of bricks finessing the structure, leaving us with a 450 mil deep treads and 150 mil risers roughly. Did a bit of experimenting 
and this seemed like the most comfortable configuration when you're stepping up and down. Now in terms of the bricks and paving, we wanted an authentic looking sort of old fashioned wall that looks like it's been here for a while, rather than these slightly naff 1970s bricks that we've lived with for the last 15 years. And you can see, I mean, they're never meant for this sort of job. They've even got if stock printed on the back of the brick. So we found these bricks at a local salvage yard, which apparently come from a Manchester hospital. The bricks were £1.20 plus VAT per brick, so not cheap, but also not the most expensive around for reclaimed. We've added hydrated lime to the builder's sand and cement mix at a ratio of one part lime, one part cement to four parts sand. And I've learnt a new trick from watching Danny and Gaz. I've always tried to point the mortar immediately, which can lead to smearing on the bricks, whereas they leave it for a while and then rake away the excess with a wire brush to leave this fantastic, authentic look. And with the paving, we've gone for this Indian sandstone Raj Green, which is £20 plus VAT per square metre. Look out for the vid on laying the paving stones, which will be coming up, and I may be doing quite a lot of that work myself with the money quickly running out. And that brings us neatly onto costs and budgeting. I'm going to give you a full breakdown of everything that it's cost uh, to do the kitchen renovation when we've finished that project. But suffice to say, our original budget for the kitchen knock through has been blown out of the water since we decided to do the extension and all of this garden work. This garden remodeling has to date cost £20,000, comprising the following. And I reckon it will cost another £10,000 to see it more or less through to completion. Now I said at the start that projects like this aren't great for the YouTube videos and if I'm not videoing and editing and uploading a video I tend to get a bit anxious and the costings for this job have taken me to a new level of anxiety if I'm honest. The thing is I never intended this project to be anything more than a simple knock through that I could do with pay paying builders on a day rate and just recording the cost as I went along so I could tell you all what it cost at the end of the project. So I've kept a detail of those costings, but I didn't do a budget. I have now budgeted for the rest of the job, but it's quite difficult at this point with money running out and us having to resort to loans and looking at mortgage rates, which isn't great at the moment with the interest rates the way they're going. Uh, we're almost too late in the process to have sort of did, done this. So if you can take anything from today's video, if you're planning a project like this, it's absolutely crucial to budget so that when you press the button at the start, you know exactly what you're letting yourself in for, or as much as you can. Because after all, what you're probably gonna to have to do if you can, is get a few builders to quote for the project so that you can pay a set price rather than the day rate that I'm paying my guys. And then you have to obviously hope that they're trustworthy. There is a massive skill shortage, we're told in the country at the moment for this sort of job. And whilst you might pay a slightly higher upfront fee to factor in their profit elements, bearing in mind that I'm project managing this myself, you have that peace of mind that you can afford your job before it kicks off. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching this far to those of you who've got to this point. And if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you next weekend and look out for more videos on this project over the summer.